The Quarter Custom Rifles presents If you're a hunter, which you probably are since you're watching this show, you hear the word Kansas, you automatically think of big giant whitetails, and for good reason. I've been guiding and outfitting up here for over a decade, and we've killed some absolute giants. We're hoping this year is going to be no different. So come along this week as Alan and Josh Rovig bring their 45 XMLs to hunt the early muzzleloader season here in Kansas. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by. McWater Custom Rifles, Extreme Wildlife Adventures, Swarovski Optique, Yeti Coolers, and Barber Creek Shooting Academy. Well, that's about it. Last charge for my 45 XML. I leave for Kansas tomorrow. And I got my gun out on the range. We shot it a couple times at longer distance. We're gonna finish up at 300 here. And we'll be ready to go to Kansas. Them big bucks in Kansas are gonna be in trouble. They, they eluded us on the first early muzzleloader season. Larry's got a begging spotted. We're gonna kill him tomorrow. We're gonna shoot it one more time. I've been shooting it all the way out to 500. We've walked it back into 300, just making sure we're dead on. And, uh, put the sport ears on and let's send one more before we get ready to go kill a big Kansas bug. That's a dead one. That's a bullseye. I tell you what, them Kansas bucks, if one comes out, he better be way further than that. We're gonna kill some bacon this time. So we're down in Kansas. You can just feel that it's deary. You can just feel that you're in the land of giants. This week we're hunting with McCorder's new 45 XML. We're topping it with Swarovski Optics. Um, first thing we want to do is go out to the range and make sure that everything's still dead on and ready to shoot. Three quarter low and a quarter to the left if he was aiming center. Shoot it one more time or are you good? No, it's on. That's me wobble. We get into the EWA camp. We meet Larry. Larry's got us super excited. He's got several deer that he's already had patterned throughout the summertime. He really does his homework. EWA Outfitters, opening day at Kansas muzzleloader season, early muzzleloader season, September 11th. Larry's got nine bucks on trail camera that we're fixing to go sit on this big draw. Really excited. I got the Got the muzzle loaders dialed in, ready to kill something. So it's the first morning EWA Outfitters. We're heading to the Beaumont blind, which is overlooking a big soybean field. That's that tall, wide, straight right eight pointer. That's that nine pointer. Oh, he has a nine. You got him right there? He's a lot weaker on his left. Early season, we're pre-rut. We are hunting the twilight times. We're hunting just a little bit after daylight, a little bit before dark. You know, there's not a lot getting them up on their feet besides these summer patterns. So we got five days to get it done, so we're hoping to get it done in those little periods of time. Already got a lot of activity. It's about 55 degrees. Got a nine point out in the field. A lot of deer scattered out. Uh, it's about four days past the full moon, so it's looking real good for us. Oh, 
elsewhere. See a good nine point, our first good bone really had our heart going. We really didn't see a lot after that one. But that's how it happens in early season. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Sport Ear by Axel Hearing Performance. Day two in a nutshell. Day two. Midweek EWA. So far, our deer have missed their appointments. So, we're going to rally cap it today, maybe change out our underwear and see if we can have a little bit better luck today. Feels pretty good. Ready to get going. Just have got enough light. We got toes. Got a few bucks out in the field. We got a few bucks out there sparring. So there's a good buck right there on the blue line. Walking away. Twos and threes on him. We know he might be taking a shot at this one. Um, give it a few minutes, see if we can get him in here, get a good close look. So the buck dips inside of the wood line. We don't want to get a real good look at him after that. That's pretty much where the morning went. Like I said, early season is all or nothing early in the morning. I think we're going to get out. We're going to do a little bit of scout and see if we can't find another vantage point. We'll change the, change the scenery up a little bit, see if our luck changes. We're loading up. We'll change up the scenery tonight, see what we can get done. We're heading towards the end. I think you're still looking up. There's still a lot of good bucks on camera, but a lot of them are, are nocturnal right now. So day four, it starts getting hot. This early season is starting to kind of turn. The weather's not good. The moon's getting a little bit later on us. We're really trying to figure out how to make something happen. thing we see on day four. We see probably a three and a half, four and a half year old, real mature, big body, frame. I told him one more step. How much dope do you put in for this level? You just back off the parallax. Just gotta stop it. He was easily a Boone and Crockett, pushing world record. I don't know, he's a Booner for sure. Yeah, bye Felicia. Enough about that, on to day five. So the last day, morning hunt, Really not a whole lot worth mentioning, but we were getting close. We were hunting the bottom side of a draw of where Larry found a deer midday. He found this deer they call Muley, and he is a giant eight pointer. He's a huge eight pointer. He's definitely one we're gonna go after this evening. So it's our last hunt, it's our evening hunt. We get dropped off. We walk in about 200 yards. We decide to resituate our gear and we look up and 800 yards away is Muley. There's a giant buck on that freaking hill up there. You freaking see him? That's, I mean, that's our buck right there. So we're out of the truck. We see this buck 800 yards away. He's straight downwind. So it's two hours before dark, and what we do is we get on top of this knoll where we have a good vantage point where we can shoot anywhere 
If he comes within four or 500 yards from him, he's gonna be dead, and we just know he's gonna come down to us. Two big mature bucks, but the one is definitely that mule buck. He just moved in here this morning. It's the first time they've seen him in two weeks. So it's 20 minutes before we're gonna run out of shooting light. He finally sees this deer, and the deer has actually moved the opposite direction. So it's time to boogie. We decided to make a move, and we're gonna go right at him. We're getting anywhere we can to where we can get a shot this year. We got about seven, 800 yards to make up in a little bit of time. So we finally get up to the top of the hill. We've worked the wind where we can get where we're supposed to be. We've got a great vantage point, and we see our deer. It's 256 yards. He gives us a shot, we're gonna take him. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Sport Ear by Axel Hearing Performance, and Surge Pro by Biofact Crop Care. Hey, James back with Barber Creek Long Range Hunting and Shooting School. We're going to talk about shooting with a clean bore or a foul bore. Do yourself a favor if you get ready to go on a hunt, don't ever hunt with a clean bore. So if you clean your gun up and you're getting ready to go, go kill something, the very first thing you need to do is stop at a range or when you get to your new destination, tell your, uh, tell your PH that you're going to go ahead and, and foul your gun. Number one, you want to re-zero and check your zero anyway. If you shoot from a clean bore, the first one or two shots are gonna be a little bit different than the rest. So always get a little bit of carbon and a little copper in your barrel before you go on a long range hunt. And I'm gonna shoot this at a thousand yards to kind of show you why. So we just cleaned this gun up. I'm gonna shoot it at a thousand yards. You're gonna notice that the first shot's gonna be lower. The second shot's probably gonna come up a little bit. And then usually about the third or fourth shot, it'll be fouled, it'll be ready to go. And watch this and it really will affect your impact at long range. So here we go. Yep. Really makes a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, stabilized. Do one more, do a three shot group. So I got a nice three shot group out there. The group's probably sitting at about uh, two and a three quarter inches and in, from, you know, vertical. But the first shot is almost five inches low. It's kind of common. So not a big deal. You say to yourself five inches at a thousand yards, it's a half a minute, but that really doesn't make a difference with spin drift, human error, wind deflection, and then just shot placement and setup. So you got to really pay attention to shooting cold bore, clean bore, or not cold bore, but clean bore, and then make sure that the clean bore does not happen on a long range hunt. You've got to make sure it's a fouled barrel, and you can see why. So we tightened up really good on the fouled barrel. The clean bore would have got us on a long range shot. And that's another downrange shooting tip from Barber Creek Long Range Shooting School. Thanks for joining us. So we finally get up to the top of the hill. We've worked the wind where we can get where we're supposed to be. We've got a great vantage point and we see our deer. 256 yards. He gives us a shot, we're gonna take him. You ready? Ooh! God! God, we got him! Man, we freaking smoked him. We got a 10 mile an hour crosswind. I gave him about four to the left. God, we got him, dude. <laughs> Larry was on his game today. He said he's here at 6.15, and we came out, and he was stayed out all day, I guess. We, he was here when he's been here the whole time. We've just been trying to get on. We just moved 1,000 yards. Not in shape to be doing that. I'll do that next time. But we just put a giant on the ground. We are thrilled in Kansas on the last day of the hunt, early muzzleloader. Ah, where are we going? There ain't no tracking needed. Good night. Let's look at this freaking buck there, buddy. 
Hey, look what it did to that joker. Marcy, I had him at 258 yards right through here, and we just put a freaking whopping on him. That buck right there has got some age. He's old. He's got good brows. That day right there was freaking fun. That's a last minute buck with the last few minutes of light. We have bucks all over the place. A good widespread. That's one we have out on camera. That's one Larry put us on. That's one we put down. That is good stuff. An EWA, Larry took care of us. So we got a big Kansas buck down. First year down of the season on the first for the McCorder team. I did my part. What you got, Dad? Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants, Capstone Precision Group, Brooks Barrels, Borden Accuracy, Trigger Tech, Revolution Safe Company, Safari Club International Foundation, and Browning Trail Cameras. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. Well, our first morning back in Kansas is rifle season. We got a muzzleloader tag, so we're out here with a 45 XML. Something's going to die this morning. I feel lucky. It's just now getting light. We're looking east into this tree line here, and we got got a buck and a doe over there. It's not it's not our target buck, but that's a that's a good sign. Two more does over there. We got at least three decoys out here this morning. We just we just need old drop time to show up. Come on, Cletus. Come on, come on, come on out. This wind's gonna change around to the south tonight. We're still good as long as it don't blow out the, straight out the west, we're good. I'm looking for a buck. Well, we got our old double stick set up here, and the way this is set up, we can't get any closer than about 350 yards to uh, to the edge where this main trail comes out in this field. But we're comfortable with our with our gun first of all, and then with this stick set up because when I'm on this gun, I don't have even a half minute of wobble at 350. That's that's not a lot of wobble, so. We got about a five mile an hour uh, full value wind coming across here, so we're looking at holding about a minute on this shot here, so. That's a buck, that's our buck. There's a buck. He went down. He went down, didn't he? Uh -huh. <laughs> Woo! 45 X male is bad medicine on the big white tails. Good old 45 X male. <laughs> 325 grain bullet. This one's going 3,038 feet a second. We put a good shot on him and uh, we got a big old Kansas buck on the ground. <laughs> that ain't as long as this gun will shoot, but that's a long shot with a muzzle loader. Old droppy. I ain't killed the drop time in a couple weeks, so I'm glad I Glad I shot him for a couple of years. <laughs> I, I'd say he hit the ground pretty hard. Look at the mud on his horns over here. 
not the not the biggest scoring deer I ever killed or the biggest scoring deer in Kansas, but a big five-year-old, really unique drop tine, got an inside point and cool. If he was matched up on both sides, he'd be a, a world beater, but got a weird brow tine, got a got a separate base here. I mean he's got a he's got a whole separate base coming out of there. So he couldn't decide whether he wanted his tines to go up or down, so he put one up, put one down, because he didn't want to be wrong, so he just wanted to be a 50% chance of being right. So, man, 45 XML is the baddest thing on the planet. 6,600 pounds at the muzzle, it would kill a T-Rex if there was any T-Rexes left. I'm a happy Kansas hunter. We're gonna put our tag on him, and uh, I'm going back to Georgia early. Ooh.